Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. How can we integrate the intention of seeking Allah's pleasure into our mundane actions? So of course this is somewhat related to the previous question. How does one integrate the intention of seeking Allah's pleasure into our mundane actions? So previous question was um, it was about what is the significance of doing this? And this question deals with what is the manner of doing this? So how should we essentially do this? How do we have a good intention? So let's start with the first, uh, the first issue, which is the niya. Every action should be accompanied by an intention. In other words, you should frame your objective with an acute consciousness of purpose as you commence that action that I'm doing this for the sake of Allah, or rather I'm doing this in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is essentially when we say lillahi ta'ala, for the sake of Allah. Having a good intention does not, uh, does not mean that we have to express a certain verbal expression of our intention at the commencement of a particular action. Though when it comes to worship in the Shafi'i school, generally speaking, the school of thought of the Shafi'i madhab would recommend a verbal expression of the intention in order to assist one's heart and one's mind to be focused. But for as long as we understand that the intention, you know, a niya, mahalluha al qalb, the place of the niya, the point of origin of the intention is the heart, the spiritual heart. So we just have to orientate ourselves so that when we perform any action, again, worldly or otherworldly, that we do so with an intention that. I'm undertaking this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this way, you've integrated a good intention into what is apparently a, a mundane action. The key to transforming an ada, a usual everyday action, to ibadah, which is an act of worship, is essentially a niya to have an intention, and ittiba'u sunnah to follow the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what we mean thereby is, if there's any guidance from the sunnah that we can implement, we should implement that wholeheartedly. For example, starting with the right hand side would be part of the sunnah way of doing things. Uh, doing things in odd numbers as opposed to even numbers would be, would be part of the sunnah in uh, how we do things. Doing things with ihsan, right, to, to have excellence in everything that we do, or itqan, right? Allah yuhibbu idha amala ahadukum amlan ayyutqinahu. Because Allah loves that when any one of you, do, you know, whenever you perform any action, that you do so to the best of your ability, that you demonstrate excellence. So a Muslim is one who strives for excellence in every permissible avenue in their lives. Again, whether this is this worldly or otherworldly. And this is part of how we implement a good intention. And then another key element in terms of how we can integrate uh, sincerity and a good intention into everything is to always have gratitude, to acknowledge that what we have and the orientation that we have, the inspiration that we have to do something, the ability that we have to do something is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and express gratitude for this is the key to increasing in blessings and increasing in Allah's favor for us. And then finally, it is to ensure that we have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predominantly through our uh, obligatory acts of worship, so our five daily prayers, but then over and above that to implement as many of the masnoon supplications, the supplications that come from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and have that salted and interspersed over our day. So have a set of supplications in the morning, have a set of supplications in the evening, adhkaru sabah wal masa, this is the most uh, prolific, the most ubiquitous list of supplications is part of the morning and evening rituals of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we dedicate some time in the morning after Fajr, some time in the evening between Asr and Maghrib towards this effort. And then again, interspersed means also that before and after every action in our lives, every significant action, there's a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We wake up in the morning, Alhamdulillah illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. Go to sleep at night, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. You enter into the bathroom, you go in with your left, and, uh, your left foot first. You say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khaba'ithi min al-shaytani rajim. You come out, you come out with your right foot first. You say, Alhamdulillahi alladhi ahyana, uh, alhamdulillahi alladhi adhaba anil adha wa afani, ghufranak. 
your forgiveness to Allah, and so on and so forth. So in this way, we can convert our everyday schedule that, you know, the usual 24 hours that we have, but the entire day is converted uh, into an act of worship. Now, this is especially significant now for these 10 days. It's always relevant, but in these 10 days, it becomes especially significant because the Prophet وسلم, he especially encouraged the doing of good during this time. So naturally, when this happens, we ask the question, so what should we do? Right? And there are, in fact, some prescribed acts of worship for this time that we find ourselves. There's the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, which is Yawm Arafah, and it is a day in which fasting is prescribed in the Sunnah, and it has the virtue of wiping away the previous year and the coming year's sins. All the minor sins will be wiped away. And of course, if we accompany that with Tawbah, then even the major sins can be wiped away. May Allah grant that to us. Ameen. And then beyond that, our fuqaha also encourage the fasting of every day, from the 1st of Dhul Hijjah till the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. The 10th, of course, being Yawm Eid Al-Adha, and therefore it is not permitted to fast on that day. So the fasting of the first nine days. Then we ask, okay, what else can we do? And we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that during these days, these numbered days, these known days, that we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance. So the sunnah teaches us, abundantly recite subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Now of all of these acts of worship that, that are highlighted in our sacred religion, there is no specific act of worship that would really encompass our every day and every night. Fasting is not specifically uh, for this time period. It's one of the good deeds that we can do, whereas fasting on the 9th of the Hijjah is specifically mentioned. So what we can gather from this is that instead of looking for specific acts of worship that we can do that is beyond what we are supposed to be doing, go through the list of priorities and ensure that what we do is in conformity with what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what I mean thereby is, first things first, stay away from haram. Make sure you're doing what is obligatory upon you. Thereafter, engage in what we mentioned of the supererogatory acts of worship or the voluntary acts of worship and do as much of that as you can be consistent with and everything that you do, everything that we just mentioned, will be a means of earning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah